Hi and welcome. My name is Ali Hart and I am the host of this podcast and you're listening and watching How to Build a Creative Business in a Noisy World. I really hope you enjoy the episode. Hi and welcome to the Hindsight Series. You are listening to me, Ali Hart, talk to you uh, about and with different people who I admire and who I'm inspired by and who are making waves in the business uh, sector and also in the creative industry. So today I have my friend Ian Young. Hi Ian. Hi hey, Ali. Um, I'll let you introduce it. Ian and I go back a long time. Um, honestly my second it's boy. Long. Yeah very long, very long time. Well Ian, uh, Ian will explain. Who are you Ian? Ian tell us who you are. Well I'm a fitness and conditioning coach. Um, I have been involved in this industry actually since my first job was when I was 16 when I worked for Mary Peters in her gym in Lisburn. Um, I've also worked for Mike Bull. So they were two Olympic athletes. Um, so I don't actually want to say how long that is. <laughs> it's a while. It's a long, it's a long time. Um, and I've, yeah, I've been involved for for close to close to 30 years now in this industry. And you now, so it, it now you're Ian Young online because everything has shifted. But when I first met Ian, he well, it was at boxing. A friend, Jane, a mutual friend of ours, took me to boxing. Mm-hmm. That was where I first uh, was mm-hmm. trained by you. And then this kind of evolved into then I did some personal training with you. And then when I had the fitness and well-being blog, we collaborated too. So tell me just a little bit about how you started because football is a massive part of your life or was wasn't it as well yeah, it was. I, play, I played football obviously um i live in Seinfeld, so the only amateur team i've ever played was in Seinfeld, and i actually still play for uh well i did before lockdown um and uh loyal yeah, yeah that's it you gotta be and <laughs> uh, um so from Seinfeld at the age of 16 i went and played for a team in belfast called crusaders fc and from there, I um, went on to play for Linfield for about five years as well. And then I went back at Crusaders again in between the place for, for Ards for a couple of years. And my last team was Newry. Okay. Um, because my grandfather, he played for them. And I just wanted to go up and play there. Uh, and uh, so I was, I was up there for about a year and a half. But I, you know, I stopped there early and I think, yeah. Any sports person will tell you that they they know they know when the time's right to go. And like I stopped when I was 26, 27, so I was young. But I'd fall, I'd fallen out of love with football, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I didn't get anything from it anymore. Uh, and arguably, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm completely honest, that's that's a lot to do with me back then. And I felt I was hard done by, and I I felt I I sh- I, I should have been at a better team and still didn't feel it. And you know I've, I've thought about this over the years and processed this a lot. And when I look when I look back on that, I have nobody else to blame apart from myself. Mm. And uh, and I just I simply didn't. It's not that I was not that I was arrogant or far from that. And um, I probably just thought. I was a bit, as I say, when when I got moved on from Linfield, then I was a bit hard done by, and maybe I went slightly introverted and and huffed a bit, and and that that probably affected my performances, or sorry, affected my performances, affected me as a person, yeah. and um, I just fell out of love with football. So well, you'd kickboxing as well was around yeah. that time, was it? Because just it's, it's really funny. interesting, and we can go, we can obviously go back to that because I want to hear that story. But I wonder if that's like you talking about that internal uh, conversation with yourself. If that that kind of feeling a bit hard. I wonder if that's because you always strive for better because you are very driven and entrepreneurial. I wonder if that was like yeah. a success but, was important. I think yeah, massively. You know, but I think. It was that realization there because I literally stopped playing football one week. I, I just I'd had I'd had enough, and I'd, I'd and I knew it. if I was if I'm honest, I look back now, I, I should have gone two or three years before that. Mm-hmm. I, I I stayed on for two or three years, and I just probably can not 
the way I was, my performances weren't great. And, uh, and, and, that, and that showed. And so I continually let myself down in terms of how I, how I performed possibly on the pitch. I could have played better. I, I could have trained harder, but I let things get to me. Mm-hmm. And it's only now that I'm, that I'm older that I, that I can, and over the years, and maybe that just comes with age, it comes, comes with experience, and that, that I can process that and actually point the finger back at myself and say, it's, it's me that's caused that. So I stopped playing football one weekend, and I walked into the, the gym, uh, boxing gym, weekend after and I literally from there was uh, uh, that started a completely different journey for me that, took and that me was quite a successful journey too wasn't it so what age were you yeah. there um, I was the British European world champion um, right. I, I, I finished up the world champion um, at super welterweight and it was a completely different journey and I think that's the journey that I had that I had to take because the only person in that journey that was going to let me down was me. Yeah. It, it wasn't well, that's team. very solo, isn't it? You didn't have a team. Yeah, yeah. yeah you go yeah. from that to being just so you. If I, if I wanted to achieve that, then ultimately it's me that that, that has to put the work in. And I think I think that's that's the journey I had to take to get. Uh, a bit back from myself and so tell me then about the training because you're a people person as well so that the the kickboxing that obviously took up your whole life did it really yeah back then um if you speak to my wife Debs, and i think the busiest year i had i had 10 fights in a year and i was going over to switzerland going over to portugal going to spain cyprus all over europe and and it, it did take a bit of a it's tool. Um, you need to be strong to get through that uh, as a as a partnership. And uh, I think if I, if I had to continue to do that, it, it might have driven a, a wedge between. Because it was tough. Because I was I was yeah. always kind of calling that I walk around over thirteen stone, thirteen and a half stone. Um, but I was fighting at ten stone, twelve, ten stone, ten. So the weight cuts for me were pretty savage and. And it, it, I, I've been told I, I, I wasn't a great person to live with. Um, I thought it was great. <laughs> well, how not. old were you at that stage then? So you were married uh, then as well? Not married at that point. Um, okay. Dating. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But you were uh, yeah. How, how old were you? Probably I started 20, at that point at that stage, 29, 30, 31, going through wow. that. So, um, and. And I was late to get into the sport. You know, I'd, yeah. I'd, always, I'd always done, I'd always done uh, martial arts as a kid and box as a kid. Um, I was kind of not rough, but you know, uh, as boys are, as you know. And, uh, yeah, the house of boys. Yeah. yeah um, but so it, it was always something I was interested in, um, and uh, the weight cuts were just they were just harder. They were getting harder. The, the older you get, it's uh, it's harder. Yeah. Um, and yeah, how do you find that transfers into what you do now? So when did the personal training and everything start with you? I, I started personal training probably when I was still boxing, fighting okay. um, in the gym. I started there uh, in terms of that. Obviously, I had that experience before with, with Mary Peters and Mike Bull and... Uh, um, for, for many years, but in terms of the one-to-one stuff, then I started that at the tail end of my fighting career. And uh, that, tra- that was a simple transition across then that just grew. Um, we started doing the, the, sorry, go ahead. There was also then the group sessions though, because yeah. personal training is one thing, whereas like you, you know, certainly in Northern Ireland, if you think about that 10 years ago, 11 years ago, you were doing that and other people were not like you're filling a hall filling a couple yeah, of halls well, a week so we started doing that we did that in shaw's bridge in belfast and we literally went down to the, the side of the river and there was i think three maybe four people first session and we just had resistance bands this was this was probably 
15. It would be. Yeah. And uh, um, there was literally three, literally three, three people, four people, resistance bands. The next week, they brought a couple of friends. Then after that, they brought a couple of friends. And before we knew it in Shaw's Bridge, we had like 35, 40 people, all, all training outside. And this, this was the first time this started. We had to, we then, it got to October. And we literally just ripped the back end out of, out of being outside. It was pitch black. <laughs> and we thought like we were going to find a hall. So we found St. Dominic's on the Falls Road. And uh, it's rather school. And um, we built that. And it was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off. 70, 80 people a night. Um, and do you remember and, your book just being full of all of the equipment? Yeah. And then you got to store it, didn't you, eventually? Yeah, in the places where you... <laughs> So we did that and then up into Rathmore and Rathmore as well was I fifth thirties. And you know, the, there was classes there of like 116 people okay. back in, and that's when there was no, as you say, there, there was nobody else doing this. There's maybe one other, John McCluskey at Queens. There's only really two sort of boot camp style classes. We, we would have, regularly have 80, 90 people. The highest ever was 116. And, that big and there was there wasn't even Instagram then, you know. There no. wasn't there was Facebook. I remember there was you caught up on Facebook. And at that at that point, the Facebook pages had maybe when we were two years in, you could get a Facebook page, a business yeah. page. That, yeah. Like that's how long ago it was, and uh, it it was more so. It was like word of mouth, um, and it was just it was it was fantastic. Great. Well, for people then uh, listening, so a lot of people would be starting out in their career and see it. And, and I like to talk about how uh, I I think for me, all of those times I met with people face to face and had people in my studio, that's what's actually built it to where I am now, being able to transfer online. Would you say the same? Yeah, definitely. You know, the connections that you made, you know, all of those. You have to, there's not, you know, my mum always said, God rest her soul, you know, you just you'd be no matter what that's not, not the sounds wrong, no matter what you think or what you do just, just it's nice to be nice mm -hmm. and, and to build those relationships up because at some point in the way back down you, you might need those um totally. but it's uh and it's i am i i enjoy people and i and and i feed i feed off that that uh environment of having people there and um that's really transgressed and transformed over into the online yeah. that we do all the online classes now and it's worked massively well and you still get that sense of community yeah with the team and they get that as well and i know if you had to ask ask me even probably at the start of the pandemic about doing zoom I, I wasn't doing those no i was writing programs for people yeah. But we still hadn't gone into the Zooms. And I possibly thought they might, I didn't think they would work as well as what they did. Now, arguably, there was nothing else for people to do. Yeah. So they, they, they had to go into that. But now it's just, it's almost like a way of, of life for people. And it gives them, they can roll out of bed at 6 a.m. They don't need to get up at half five, quarter past five to go and get their hair on, to get their makeup on, to go to the gym because yeah. they're scared of they're scared of people actually seeing what they look like at first thing in the morning. Yeah. So now you're get, we've had people who are training more often. We've got a better structure in place, mm -hmm. and 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 they've arguably they've seen the best results they've ever had in the past year simply by by having this online presence. Now, I'm not disputing the fact that there's nothing else out there and, and there was all pigeonholed in the Zooms. Mm -hmm. Of course it was. But they've now seen how having that consistency, the discipline and structure in place. Yeah. We have a males lost a great stone. So guys losing four stone, five stone, six stone in a year. You've, you've completely changed these people's lives. Yeah. And like all, all these distractions that were out there, going to the gym and then let's go for coffee and a bun afterwards. I know. 
I remember years ago um, when I was training with you and I was like, I was training hard and you would have put up an image and said, no, no. And it would have been an image of a bun in a, in a bakery. And I thought, why does he not just eat the bun? Why does he not? And then it was only whenever I actually did, like I maybe had a photo shoot one time and I was disciplined for nine full days, like fully disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> nine days, nine full days. And I was absolutely <laughs> delighted. <laughs> no, nine days for me. But luckily my metabolism is quite high. But I remember Michael saying, imagine if you did that long term. What you? Because I remember thinking, everything's popping in nine days. No, nine days. But yeah, I could now see how I do still enjoy my treats. But I did a 12 mile run this morning. So I, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm not one of these people that, that, that sit and do, uh, I'm not one of these people that say, you can't have that, you can't have this. You know, I, I enjoy the fruits of life, red yeah. wine, pizza, and I don't harp on the people about, about them having to do that. No, but if you want all. results, you have to be disciplined. Yeah, of course. If you yeah. want, if you have a very specific goal, yeah, then you've got to stop all the BS, all the, you know, you, Cut, cut that out if you've got a specific goal. Yeah. But if you if you want to feel more comfortable, more confident, and still enjoy those things, I think it's with that balance. Yeah. You can't you can't have all the good stuff here in <laughs> nine days. Nine days. Go to nine day cut. I know. It felt like a big deal to me at the time. Um, actually, speaking of that, not to digress too long, but I decided six or seven, seven weeks ago after I'd got um, a cardiologist said that I could like train again because I wasn't sure mm. for about a year and a half. Uh, and I said, but can I train for half marathon? And he said, OK, yeah, yeah, you can. So I signed up the next day for the Belfast half. But I was so like. I knew that I just let myself like kind of go and was fluffy and I would say now six weeks on being really pretty disciplined not 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 very disciplined but more disciplined with my training and Mm -hmm. um like even I was trying to do like a few days of low carb and then a high carb just to see um and I'm not sure what your views are on that but it was very loosely speaking that as you can hear that I don't necessarily go hammer and tongs but I would say now six weeks in I feel strong and so good when I'm running like I did that 12 miler today and it was slow paced because I have my vaccine but um strong if the feeling of feeling strong is really powerful yeah it is but you have to work at it you have to lift the weights and do the training you know you do your your I would be like that as well. Like I've got a new challenge coming up on the, the 8th of May that I've started for. And um, I'm just really focused on that and feel feel great today. And same as what you say, I always feel like once my core starts to get really tight, I feel really centered. Yeah. Really centered and really, really strong. Yeah. Um, and, and as you said, it's, really, it's a nice feeling. Um, um, on that the note of being centered it's nice to hear you sound so holistic Ian actually yeah. um you you're online uh so people as well be interested in how diverse that is so it's not just you doing classes online you now have um a yoga instructor and there's all of these different elements it's a real um uh it's a body of like a health hub. yeah a health hub yeah well-being hub love it <laughs> so do you want to tell us a little bit about that and what, what you felt because you're talking about pe- being people like people person about um like having gone through everything with football and now looking back on that and being able to like I'm really fascinated in that sort of the psychology and how my like hindsight's a wonderful thing that you can now see yes. how that affects you, know, you but you're I wish, um, I wish I had a um so I created this this online hub um, and I didn't want it just to be body weight, hip, or strength, or metcon work. I, I wanted to encompass everything within this, in, in terms of this, as you said, have this holistic approach as well. Because um, I know for me, when I was younger, going, if I had something to tap into like that, I'm, I might have seen things very differently totally um even just the way the world is at the minute there's a lot there's a lot of mental health issues and arguably that's going to get even worse um and i wanted to 
to try to create a platform that, that yes, we did have everything attached to fitness conditioning, mm -hmm. but then I wanted to have everything that's to do with mindset, reset the body, uh, and that's why we brought in the, the meditation, the mindfulness with Kevin, mm -hmm. and we, we brought in the yoga, the Pilates, the breath work, the movement, all of that is in there. And for me, it's it's a it's a complete package mm -hmm. that, that people can have, and it, and and I think it's helped a lot of people um, to have that. We have over thirty six live sessions on a month, and then there's an on demand library. It's a library suite, and you can just go in and pick what you want to pick. And how do you feel being, and now that my own team is growing as well, like being a leader, I find is quite hard. Do you find that you're the leader of that group or is it people that just, you say to them, like, can you come in and offer me this or you're part of my team you're under the umbrella? What well, way does... I like to think that they are part of the team and, and I want the whole thing to grow and I want the, them to grow with me. Okay. Um, yeah. and, and in terms of leadership, you know, I'm very much hands-on and, and I, I wouldn't technically see myself self as a leader. You know what? I, I like to get the hard work done mm -hmm. and graph for it. And, and that means that other people are inspired by that to do that, that then great. But I'm certainly, certainly not one for barking orders out and and I'm being that way inclined. Um, if, if it means obviously my name's on that because it's, my website and I brought them in to help that, then 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 great. But I'm very much a hands-on type of person and, and like we sat up, we built the website ourselves from totally from scratch. Mm -hmm. Myself and my friend David Maxwell, Maxie and, and there was all we sat up at four, half four, five AM, had an hour sleep and then woke up and did the sessions, you know, which is bad. That, that that's bad. I would <laughs> that, that's bad. Um, but it had it had to be done. Well, um, it's bad, but it's also I think it's what people don't see in a business. I I would say people think I Sharon who works for me says about she says well sure you just doodle with a wee paintbrush and I just tap away at a keyboard. People don't see those hours of um, you're staying up late and you know I, and also sometimes I think people probably wouldn't actually do the hours that I do sometimes. But no, just, we believe in what we're doing and you know you you have a goal. I I and I still and people people say oh if you do something you love you, you'll never work a day in your life so which is true that is that's very true and if I'm up every day at half five and there's days there's days I'm still on the laptop at eleven o'clock at night half ten mm -hmm. at night that's a lot it's a long day but yeah I I don't overly see it as work brilliant and um so in terms of fear would you have any um advice for people like fear is a big thing that i find even the people that i mentor they are like fear can hold any of us back same with me when it goes to maybe doing a live or want to think overthink about doing anything but i've started to let go of what people think i don't really like care as much anymore because yes. i feel like the people that love you love you anyway do you have any advice on fear but even growing like, up like like me you know i grew up i grew up with a bad stammer Mm -hmm. And I was always afraid, always scared. My mum was going to send me over to Cambridge, I think it was. There was a, a big workshop over there for, for people who have stammers. And at the end of this, you stand in a box, and I think it was definitely Cambridge, and you stand in a box and you speak to the whole square of people. Okay. Um, you tell them who you are and where you come from. And like, so I, when I was a child, when I was younger, my nickname was uh, Machine Gun Ian or Tommy Gun Ian because I, I literally couldn't get the words out. So I was da 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 So, and, and, you know, it's kids. Kids are kids. And, yeah. you know, it's, uh, so that was it. So I was, that was really as a kid I got. And still, like, I, I wake up on days, even now, and I would, instantly I know if I'm going to have a problem with an S or an M or a W or an R. Mm -hmm. Certain words. Um, and I, so if I'm, if I'm speaking to you now, I know that today my, my S's aren't great. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, doing, I'm, I'm doing everything to try to avoid answering a question that has, a, has an S in it. Or if I do, I'm taking the breath before that. 
And do you think that's just knowing yourself really well? Like I talk about yeah, self-acceptance a lot. That's now 40 years of having a stammer. Yeah. And the point that was really bad. And I, I did go to speed start before that. My mum took me over two times a week to speed therapy in Lisbon. And so I, you know, I, I grew up with a fear of, of being afraid to speak to people because they, they would laugh at me. Mm-hmm. And even when I was a... I was going out in the Belfast as a teenager and the, in the bars and stuff that uh, every, everybody used to think I was really shy. Because you're so just, quiet. It was quiet, but it was, it was because I was like, I, I would never have a, have a post to girl in, in my life because I ever thought, if I, speak to, if I speak to this girl, she's going to laugh at me. Yeah. So I, I grew up, and it, as you say, it wasn't to the point that I, that I, I, just, got, I just got to the point where I was like, I, I, I don't, I don't care anymore what people think of me. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Abe Sesse, you know Abe, you know Abe as well. Yeah. He, he talked about having um, something similar growing up and how he now I can't believe that he's actually like doing video and he said things that just you never would have imagined when you were younger, mm-hmm. having a stammer that you would have ever been doing. And surely that's the same with you with the big group yeah, sessions. That's, that's what people say to me, like get, if you're standing in the hall getting... You're, you're giving a speech to 80 people, 70 people mm-hmm. in the hall. Well, I think, I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a great believer that that's part of the journey I, I was meant to go on. Yeah. To help me to get to get through this, and uh, I would, I would, I would think a lot along those sort of lines that everything happens for a reason, and um, and you know, now I don't. And I would still like if I had to stand up and give a speech, I would still get extremely nervous. And I, I know for a fact that I was stammer. And uh, but it doesn't bother me as much. I I, I sometimes always say that before I did a I did a talk for Belfast but for Lisbon and Belfast Council. Uh-huh. And before I did that, I uh, I apologised to him. I said, look, I know I know this is going to happen during this speech, but just bear with me. Um, so I. I just I laugh addressed it. You addressed it, I guess, is not yeah. the thing. And I guess that's with fear when you address it, yeah. then you squash it. Hundred percent, you do. You know, you have to accept it. And and uh, and if you don't accept it, you're never going to move forward. forward so you've yeah. got to you've got to accept that, and, and you've got to face it. So uh, I definitely grew up with, with with a lot of fear in my in my younger years. Do you think the kickboxing literally uh, dealt with a bit of that? Bang bang. Kick, kick, no. I've possibly, seen you. <laughs> possibly, possibly do have. Um, I think, the, I think, more so for me, the kickboxing was was something that I had to do for myself, um, and I had to get to where I had to prove to myself that I could do that. I could do this. That I that I could achieve something because I think I let myself down a lot, and even even back. Even back then, I don't, I don't think I actually realised that that, that that that's what I was doing. Well, why would you? You don't know anything when you're younger, when you're 17, you, like you really don't. You think you so, do. So I was going through that journey, but I, and I was just, I was so, so committed to achieving that goal. But, you know, it wasn't until I stopped and now I, I, I can look back and think, that's why I was doing that. Yeah. Well, I, um, just to big you up a little bit here, I do think, you know, now that we're getting all like very deep here, I really what really struggled whenever my big two were younger. And I'm very thankful for the classes because I remember getting them. You probably, I'm sure you were very good at being like, if you have to bring them, it's okay. I remember bringing them when Michael was at hockey on a Saturday morning and I would bring their tractors to when we met out at the big fields near um, Malone or whatever. And they would go about, and that was honestly my saving grace on a Saturday. That was what I had to look forward to in a week because my career mm. was kind of nothing at the time. Like I was grappling just at getting through. So um, you definitely made a difference in my life. Thank you. It's good. Yeah. Here. Well, Thank are you, you, what hopes and dreams do you have for the business? Or like I talk a lot about just happiness and contentment over finances. And I think that I'll believe that until the day I die. But how do you view any of that? I really wanted to grow. I want to grow the online. And I just, I've just seen that we've, we're able to help so many people from around the world now. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people 
really need need help. They need direction. They need structure. And if I if I can instill a little bit of discipline, keep that consistency there, then I know I know they will help themselves so much. And it, it is about like I I love what I do. I I love helping people. Mm-hmm. End off. I I love helping people. And if I can offer a service or a platform to help more people, then great. And 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 for me, that's just what that's about. I just just want to help people to be the the best version of best version of themselves. And we've we've done that over over the last year. And like there, you know, I I mentioned Mel earlier on, and like Mel, I know she she will mind me talking about this. Mel last January February time was just under 19 stone, you know, she's 18, 18 five or 18, six. Mm-hmm. Now she's down to 11 stones and, and she's climbing mountains, she's going coach steering, she's out running, she's doing things that she, she's never done in her life before. Do and you find, me, yes. that is just so rewarding, it's so rewarding to see somebody so happy and just enjoying life. Life, yeah. And you can't really put a price on that. Do you think as well, I, I, so I think the reason that people are I really love in my online workshops is because like basically lockdown stripped us of all the noise. You couldn't run away from anything. So you had to sort of sit with yourself and sit with your own thoughts. So I love whenever I get to give people an outlet or people who didn't think they were very good at GCSE art and they just want to enjoy a Friday night or they didn't realize that they were able to paint or that like it, just enjoying mindfulness in that way. Do you find that that is what's happened as well with people like now you're talking about enjoying life? Like I do think the the beauty of life is the everyday. So enjoying Mm. hikes, enjoying runs. Like, do you think that that would, because we were all stripped away from that, people really had to either turn to wine and chippies or whatever, or the fitness, but not even in an extreme way, but just in like a serious, like this is one life. We're not going anywhere. I think or arguably, I think, the last year, there's probably more people more active than what there's ever been. Yeah. As you said, it is going out for walks, it's going out for, for hikes. Um, and some some people have, have obviously come into the online business. And, and that's great to see because it's, 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 it's only going to enhance their lifestyles. Mm-hmm. And, I and think the beauty is we can have our phone as well now, you know. It's yeah. not just you don't have to sit with a laptop or... And I think that will continue. I can't, I can't honestly see... See it going going back. You've, you've you've now got more more people will work from home than ever before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They'll either work full time from home or they will be in two or three days in the office, out two or three days. Mm-hmm. So it's going to give them it's the quality people's quality of life. You've got, you've got a choice now. When this thing lifts, you continue doing what you've done in lockdown, and your quality of life is massively going to improve. Mm-hmm. And one thing that the past year has shown is we all have the capacity to adapt and the capacity to, to change mm-hmm. for the better. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of people have chosen to, to drink for a year. Mm-hmm. A lot have. And they're going to come out of lockdown in a, in a state of mind and a physical state worse off but the majority of people have I think have really embraced it. Don't get me wrong, we've all been fed up like there's times you go out and go, oh, you, you just love to go down the white horse for I know. We've, we've we've all done that. But we'll get that back. And the fact, as you say, everything has just been stripped back. Mm-hmm. And you've been you have been left with your yourself or your family. And I think people have really embraced that. Mm-hmm. And they've seen how their as I said, how their quality of life can be improved simply yeah. by by being more more active and and looking after themselves and the, the people who are closest around them. Yeah, and just tuning into your brain as well. Isn't this is the one thing you can actually control your thoughts? Like you know, it is. Well, um, so motivation is now like people always say, oh, I can't get I can't get motivated to, to do this to do that. Motivation is an emotion. It's 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 mm-hmm. it's either there or it's not there. You can't wake up on a Tuesday morning and go, "I'm really motivated today." It's either going to be there or it's not going to be there. Yeah, and that's what discipline comes into. It's mindset. So you get all these people who are like, "I can't be 
motivated to, to do that. It's nothing to do with motivation. It's to do with your mind. Either you, you're committed to something, disciplined to actually do that, or you're not. It's your choice. It's not a choice of being, I'm motivated, I'm not motivated. Is it? It's either there or it's not there. You've got to be disciplined. Yeah, and that transfers into business as well. You know, this like the, the the creatives that would be listening to this too, like that discipline and that motivation is a choice as well. You know, you decide whether you want to be, um, you know, the next TikTok famous or whatever, or whether you want to build. I talk about building a brand for the long term. Like I, I'm in this for the long game. And I always yeah. said to my mentoring students, like I can't say to you, oh, you're going to make 90 grand in three days. That's not what this is about. This is about like mm-hmm. putting, knowing exactly who you are in the world and setting the foundation for a business that will be profitable. But you have to be motivated. Yeah, disciplined. Mm-hmm. And consistency. Will, I talk about consistency. They might wake up on a Tuesday and they're completely demotivated. But you still got to get the work done. Or just one thing. Yeah, I always say you can still do one thing. Yeah. You know, even I always talk about the best thing that you can do every single morning is make your bed. Oh, yes, that's my voice. Well, we watched one of those. Make never. your bed. Make your bed in the morning. It's something, it's a win. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's something that, that, that you've achieved or do the dishes there's nothing worse than they come on cold at night and you've got to you my, my kitchen stink out at the minute my kitchen stink and that's what i get for going on a run you see i ever i left everyone i was like i'm not doing a school run today yeah, <laughs> get that sorted. well thank you are you reading anything at the minute um, read books? i've been actually reading ross edgley's book there uh part of resilience is the guy that swam around the you awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a good book at the minute. And then, you know, I, people always, and, and, you know, it's, it's maybe three or four pages at a time. I, I think it started last year. All right. But, but uh, you know, I'm just, I'm so, sometimes I get too engrossed in, in what I'm doing for the business. Same. That, you know, people saying, what do you read? You've got, you've got all these people going, yeah, I'm reading this book, I'm reading that book, and, yeah, I've got this book, yeah, I'm going, mm-hmm. What do, you, what do you get the time to read? Always all these thinking about work, I know. Michael always says that to me, and the boys actually said that recently. One of them said, You work all the time. So I'm looking forward to taking some time at Easter. Will you take any time off? Um, we'll keep the classes going. Yeah. Keep that structure in place. Um, that's, that's a no. <laughs> that's <laughs> a no. That's a no. Okay. Well, well, well that's okay. Exactly. Better never quits, as Michael says. Better never quits. Yep. Thank you so much, Ian, yeah. for joining me. I really appreciate having you and your words of wisdom. Can you tell us where people can find you then? Yeah, you can search uh, Ian Young Online. Go to your Google and your, your browser. Ian yeah. Online or, or Instagram is Ian Young Online. Uh, Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed the episode, I would really appreciate some feedback or for you to hit subscribe so that you get all the content every week in your inbox. And if you would like to check out my website, it's alihart.com, especially if you were thinking about uh, needing some mentoring sessions because I have openings coming up in the summer. Thanks for watching and listening, and I will see you on the other side.